<clears throat> Looks like we're ready to get started. Is Tim here? He is. Oh, there's Tim. Tim, you're up. Hello. Thank you very much. I was as always in the wrong room. So let's get started. I'm super, 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 super excited to show you what I'm showing you today. Uh, so let me start my screen sharing, which is this screen. Cool. Can everyone see my screen? So uh, what I already discussed with a couple of people and we discussed already in the past uh, is the, I think the most important step is that we have now the awesome stuff in GitLab UI, we have awesome stuff in git design.gitlab.com and, and we need to figure out how to in, get this integrated and get this actually now in full swing, get this fully used, uh, make everyone aware of what is already available in GitLab UI, make everyone aware of what is already available in design.gitlab.com, exactly what is already also written by Tori and Dimitri in that uh, part, uh, and get this really into our daily usage and uh, uh, basically ramp up the production of components. So I have played around a little bit last week and have built a uh, PUC, which is already like in review mode. Uh, on one hand in GitLab UI, and then the, the, the second part of it is in designgitlab.com. Um, and um, that's what I actually want to show you today. Um, I have the example, uh, the first part will be mainly targeted at front-end engineers, and the second part will be targeted at everyone. So please bear with me. I will try to explain it as nice as possible. So if, if you get lost on the way, please let me know immediately if I'm too fast or jumpy in my, in my thoughts. Uh, but apart from that, let's get started. So what do we have? We have an example here, which is the skeleton loading. I took the most easiest component that we currently have in, in our code base on GitLab UI. So it has a props. It has basically um, one prop, uh, which is around uh, lines. Uh, so how many lines should be shown? It has even a validation in there, which is also nice. So that's uh, a minimum range of one to three. Uh, which you see here in the validator. Um, and what it was the actual problem that we have? Um, I have seen it in all the years that I'm working already, is documentation is nice as long as you start it, uh, but then documentation is not updated, it's not in prolonged, etc. So we, I tried to find a way to automatically document our uh, endeavors in GitLab UI. So everything that currently is needed on the example that I will later show you is that I have introduced a documentation property uh, attribute to the whole component. So this is there to actually describe on top of what is already there through reflection uh, to describe, for example, in this case, the validation of having a range from one to three so that this can automatically get uh, uh, documented. We have also some other examples. So for example, our button is exposing the documentation so it is exposing as it is based on a bootstrap component. It describes, okay, the base component is B button so that basically our reflection system can go to view bootstrap and take all the documentation from there and also integrate it in our documentation so that you don't need to jump between our documentation, design gitlet.com and view bootstrap, get everything in, in one place. You can describe on top of it special props infos, by example, on the variant property of the underlying button, you can describe, okay, this is an, based on an enumeration. Those are like the types like primary, blah, 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 so that this gets automatically displayed in our documentation, uh, what events we are exposing uh, in that case, etc. So uh, we have also, let me see, for example, another example is over here. Uh, where we don't have anything, which is also important with the pagination. So a lot of it gets automatically described without adding any ex extra documentation. So that's one thing is to integrate into the actual component an extra uh, attribute, which is called documentation. There's already the documentation on the documentation props is in the merge request. So what you can extend it, it's events and what you can describe is events, slots, uh, the specific properties, uh, what types they have, some special info, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other part that we have per component is the actual written documentation. And that's the part that I wanted to reduce. So before uh, I started with the whole thing, uh, the skeleton loading was 
a documentation on what is the base of it, uh, what are the properties, a table, uh, full description, etc., etc., etc. And the only thing that is left by now is just this one paragraph, which describes under the oops, which describes under the hood uh, how this uh, animation is done. The same happens for the button. So the button, oh no, the button is a bad example. The pagination has also only uh, left now the additional notes. Also, everything above can go away, uh, and which is what I will show you later on. So reducing the actual needed written documentation to an absolute minimum. Second part. Uh, the third part is examples. We want to provide examples, and that is currently something that I just started now as a POC. Let's see if we can perhaps even integrate it with Storybook in one or the other way. The way I have started it now, and that is uh, uh, here, is basically that you define, okay, examples, components, and examples for skeleton loading. So this is, by example, I found two, three other uh, uh, design systems that do it exactly in the same way. So you have a basic example, which is just a skeleton loading, which is just exporting the component, done. Second example is a one-liner. So it's exposing, okay, this is now an example with just one-line display. So super pretty, straightforward examples of that component that can be used. They are then exported through a tree that can be also grouped. So you can say, okay, these are my basic examples, these are my styling examples, etc., etc., etc. So far, so good. That's everything that you need to do in GitLab BI. So that's the part that front-end engineers need to do to actually document the component, expose examples, and that's everything that you need to do to get it imported then in designgitlab.com. Now let's go and switch over to designgitlab.com. And now I need the attention again from especially also all UXers. And I think, is Tori around? I hope she's around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I think that should make you quite happy. So what I have done is I have changed our format, which is currently some uh, view components. I changed it now to a format which is called front matter, which basically is a which is a combination between <coughs> YAML uh, definitions and properties and uh, markdown description. So the definition now of the skeleton loader defines okay the component or the the, uh, the element in the skeleton loader, the view component that we have in GitLab UI is the GA skeleton loading, and by example, at the related components is the spinner. That was also part of the description so far. And the rest is now markdown and not a view component anymore. Has a lot of advantages because you can't forget closing tags, etc., which is something because I uh, added ESLint and Pretty on top of it, and that brought a tons of missing uh, closing tags, etc. And with Markdown, we can get rid of that pretty, pretty easy. The other thing that I've implemented, and I will show you in a second uh, the outcome of it is, you have a special tag, which is currently called sample. I will rename it to example. So you can directly in Markdown can write, okay, I want to show exactly at this point one specific example, which is the skeleton loader basic, which was defined by the front end engineers on the other side. So you can write whatever you want uh, to describe the actual usage, the actual design intendants, and document it with actual living and live examples of that by simply inserting those uh, markdown comments. Yes, and that's it. And that's now what the uh, outcome of this is, is that uh, designkitlab.com now looks, the skeleton loader page looks now like this, that it has on top the design part and the view component. The actual markdown is now uh, transpiled to, uh, uh, to a view component. And in that view component, you have also now the actual example that we have just inserted through markdown. This preview component will also have the source so that you can copy it and the HTML output. So that uh, should also help then developers to actually use it. The other part that is now coming all from the reflection side from uh, GitLab BI is on the view component tab. So this is mainly for the developers to have on top of that to actually how to use this. And this is where you can see, okay, you see, you see all examples that are currently defined for a skeleton loading. You can switch between those. You can play around with those. Uh, you have the actual menu description here uh, and all the automatic description. So this component, by example, is not yet fully designed. 
So it gets an alert message, okay, our design system on this component is not fully implemented yet. It will show all the properties. In this case, it's pretty easy because it has only uh, one value, which has like a limited range. And you get automatically also the line how to import this into your code. So this is basically the, the target point for every developer to go there and actually take the code from there. And in the next step, it would be also the idea to get knobs in here so that you can actually play around with those values and, and see how the component life changes uh, on top of it. And you can also take a look at all the samples, their source code, and the HTML directly in designgitlab.com. Uh, how this will look on more complex samples, I can show you still in the storybook because I haven't integrated them in designgitlab.com. So by example, the button is a more complex uh, component. And this gets also reflected. So nothing of this is done manually. All the reflection of the properties from the view components happen automatically. They take it from view bootstrap, integrate everything into one table. Everything that is blue uh, currently is coming from view bootstrap. You get the events, you get the import. Uh, you see, okay, this is based on the view bootstrap component B button. You can go there and read even more on the view bootstrap side. And that's it. Uh, uh, that's the basic starting point to get uh, GitLab UI integrated in designgitlab.com. Questions, comments, etc. Maybe uh, I missed it in the beginning. How, oh, how do we update the thing? So, if on designgitlab.com, do we always have to forward the GitLab UI version and then we're uh, done with it? Yes, there will be, the idea is to have also there a manual task to actually upgrade the, the GitLab UI version or that we go to, to the latest uh, as always with every release. So the only thing is actually to go there, say, okay, the view bootstrap component that is underlying of this is blah, 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 and then everything gets updated from there. Okay, cool. Does the documentation property that we're adding to the view components need to be a property of the view component? Can it be some extra export or some ex uh, external file so that it can be tree shaken away in production? Yes and no. I uh, simply didn't make up my mind because I saw exactly the same thing uh, in both ways. So some did it directly in the view component or in the rec component in reality. And some people did it in an external file. Some people did it in the package.json. As we currently don't have uh, actual uh, folder structure per component, I was going for now for having it as a property. We can also inject another file that's completely up to it. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking of was that during the export, that we also could simply uh, cut it away. The property goes away through the build script uh, that you don't export it and have uh, as view, by example, you have a runtime and a full export. Uh, something like that would be also a way, but um, I couldn't make up my mind what I like easier, uh, what I like more uh, to have everything at the same place or to have it uh, in a separate file. So still up for discussion. Uh, I wanted to, first of all, thanks. This is amazing. This is like the best vacation, post-vacation gift I've ever gotten in my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, timeline, I, I know that obviously we're working on rolling this out. When do you think we'll start being able to actually see this get into design.gitlab? The merge request on the GitLab UI side was already reviewed by uh, Clement the first round last week. Um, I did now some more changes to actually during the connection between those two. Uh, on the other hand, I make everything backwards compatible. Uh, compatible. So still all the view components that were used for describing everything are still the fallback. So only if you uh, start writing and adding a markdown of these front matter files, only then the specific new control is used to display everything. So in reality, if the GitLab UI thing is reviewed and merged, then designgitlab.com can also be reviewed. I hope this gets merged, both of those, this week. Okay, perfect. And then obviously, um, I'll, I'll get with Clement to figure out how the UX department as a whole can help make sure that we're getting things done and, yeah. and speeding it up. So whatever we need to do, we'll do it. This is um, really important and really amazing to see. So thank you. You're very welcome. I think this, this will 
this should be now the kickoff that we can also scale the whole uh, GitLab UI that now we have the whole workflow in place from visual screen defeat testing over to creating the components to integrating the documentation so that everyone knows, okay, now you can go to designgitlab.com and use those components from there and everyone can start producing components and then we should get very fast way more. Uh, yeah, I think it's for both departments, it's super important that we have now then the full workflow in place. So Tim, first of all, thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm, I'm still pinching myself uh, to know if this is a dream or not. Uh, this is so cool. Um, and uh, I have two questions. So one of them is uh, related to uh, pages that uh, we currently use HTML on. Like for example, if you go to um, the foundation's color page, for example, it has a lot of custom HTML and CSS there. Mm -hmm. um, would, would it be possible to integrate both things? So Markdown with the examples and maybe some areas that have specific classes or HTML? Yeah, uh, so right now, the, what I've integrated is simply a component that looks first if we have a Markdown file, and if not, it goes back to the HTML file. Uh, I targeted it mainly now the view component. There's also an underlying view component that does now all the rendering of that stuff. That was only targeted in the first place on components, but we can take it from there and can build whatever we want so that we then also convert the color page uh, with specific HTML, so Markdown it, that is the Markdown renderer I'm using, also supports included HTML, so you can write Markdown with HTML and Markdown again, uh, so that's also, this is just really the starting point. Uh, we can also extend it. I, uh, we can extend, for example, the, the attributes per page also to have like a thumbnail and stuff like that so that we get nicer overviews, that we can create keywords on top of it. We can also, the other idea that I have on my to-do list is that we can show in the, the, the whole menu on the side, on the left, I want to create at least the component section now from uh, index file so that you don't need to add anything more anymore to the uh, to the menu manually and that we can also show if we already have view components available or not or can actually filter down the whole tree so that every engineer already knows okay there is stuff that you can use and that you can work with to uh, go ahead and, and use the stuff because I think that's for us the most important thing that we have already now five six components that everyone is aware of them and uses them all the time and uh, wow. but apart from that, we can take it from yeah. there. That's great, thank you for explaining. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, my second question is uh, related to the examples. Um, uh, you, you were showing that you defined the examples of the components in the GitLab UI. Um, why, why did you, I'm, I'm just curious to uh, understand why uh, did you define the examples there instead of being in the design system, for example? Uh, one easy thing, first of all, it's easier for the developers to actually try them out stuff uh, with the code. So if you write samples, they can be also used for the visual diffing. So every example that we write in GitLab UI is already there. And if you work in one repository, it's most probably easier oh, right. to work. Okay. And on top of that, we should be able to use also visual diffing on those. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so the, um, so for example, when you were showing the storybook that has the knobs on the right side uh, mm -hmm. that you can tweak all of the properties. Um, so that would be the, the place like the playground for uh, when people are developing components, they would be inside of storybook tweaking all the things, making sure everything works. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, but I want to, uh, that would be uh, step number two, would be to bring this also over in our table. So that this table here with the component right. property, that instead of here just having a static value that you can actually play around with it. And that's Correct. the component, that there's a component on top of it that actually changes so that you have inside designgitlab.com also the knobs, but really nicely integrated uh, in the page itself. Uh, but that would be definitely step two, so. 
Okay. And, and so when people then push a new version of GitLab UI, uh, would we have to manually update here in the design.gitlab.com or um, are you predicting another better workflow to do that? Yeah, I think we should find a way that as soon as you, that we have a really easy way as, that was the same thing that Lucas mentioned before, that we find a really easy way to have GitLab UI uh, updated in designgitlab.com in a very easy process so that you can either run just one command and then it should work or that you can do it manually over a CI step or that you can um, uh, have it always upgraded if you change by example something in the markdown. Um, but that's definitely something we need to figure out first. Thank you so much for showing. That's all I had for now. Really good. Thank you again. Any other questions? Then I will hand it over to Dimitri. Please take it from yeah, here. Yeah, sure, Tim. Uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for this. And I think uh, this has been the best answer towards the second point on the agenda, uh, which is basically the gist of it is let's communicate design.gitlab.com more with front end. And uh, as it's been mostly a resource for uh, for design, um, and it now will become uh, an even better resource uh, with more applicability for uh, for front end. I think uh, it's going to be already uh, a lot better in in the future going forward. Um, I had this um, I had this idea because of a, a discussion like, hey, um, is front end actually using this, or are they re referring back to it? And um, I just wanted to make it like known that the design system is for everybody, as 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 Tari is describing exactly in the in the sub comment there. If you've not viewed it in a while or ever, please, uh, please, please <laughs> take a look and help be an advocate for the design system throughout the throughout GitLab. I think it's interesting um, that the design system is only worth as much as the people that are using it. So the more people that are using it. Uh, the more valuable it will become, and it's a uh, it's a nice thing that not only uh, not only design people but also uh, front end people or everyone in the company can refer back to this documentation and see if decisions are made appropriately, uh, right? Or things are missing in this documentation, and we're handling on basic um, instinct or or intuition, uh, which uh, may be good but uh, should be documented in in the end. Uh, is there anything you want to add, uh, Tori? I just want to add that if this is the first time that you're seeing the design system, it's probably a little more clear what it is after Tim went through that demo. But if you're still like, what is this? It's the first time I've seen it. Just reach out to me because I would love to talk to you about it and um, just kind of evangelize it more within GitLab from our two teams because it is super valuable for our, our teams. Um, so if you're like, oh, this is so new and awesome, I want to learn more, then I'm available to talk about it. And I linked all the things that we have in there now. Um, so like take some time to look through it just to see what's currently there. And then obviously the things that awesome things that Tim is adding is super exciting. So it's really coming to life, which is really awesome to see. Um, and you had a point to this, sorry, to interrupt, yeah, go ahead. Uh, which I think I know where this point is came, coming from. It's from, a, I think it's from a discussion in a of all of mine. And I would like to iterate on the communication point because what led to this point was the fact that the mockups and the instructions provided did not match the design system. Uh, so it was very confusing to do what was in the mockups. And then on the review, um, the review wasn't like immediately approved because it wasn't according to the rest of the of the design systems or the rest of GitLab. So it was a bit confusing to have two sources of truth. And I think this is where the communication problem is coming from. Um, so sometimes it's hard to understand, should I follow the mock-up that's being provided in the issue and the instructions, or should I follow the design system? No, it's true. You got a good uh, good point there, Philippa. And uh, 
you're right on that. Like we are still in this state of like where not everything is documented and not everything is like there are multiple sources of truth. I think uh, the only way forward is 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 uh, it needs it needs our input. And um, the point of 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 uh, where I thought was like, hey, there's some um, some some misconception or some miscommunication, perhaps, is the fact that um, uh, because in in the in the communication point between us, uh, it became apparent to me uh, that the design documentation. I lost Dimitri. Yeah, I lost, lost Dimitri as well. But I do want to say that there's only one source of truth, and that is the design system. And there's cases where we may not follow the design system right now, but that there's only one single source of truth. And it's really right now in this kind of we're in between phase is a communication between the people working on the merge request and the, and the designers. Like It's just about communicating and figuring out what can get done in this merge request, what needs to be done in a second merge request. Um, I don't think it's going to be as easy as follow a mock-up or follow the design system. It really depends on so many other factors. So just communicate with the designer and then you guys have to work together to figure it out until, you know, the design system is implemented further. Or if you have time to implement something for the design system, that's awesome. Do that. But um, I do want to state that, like, there's, there's not multiple single sources of truth. There's only one. Um, it's just a matter of getting to that one over time and it's going to take time. Thanks. Um, Mate, is Mate here? I think he's next. Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Tori. Uh, so just a quick note about the discussion that we started in our UX weekly last week and just wanted to get more eyes on this, especially from front end. We have the updated form guidelines and accordingly we have the updated design specs for forms. And we started a discussion where I suggested that we should update the forms and validation of forms whenever we can, whenever we work on issues that we work on if, and if we encounter forms that we should update them. But then the pushback was that we don't always have the time or resource to do that. And then we started discussing, okay, maybe we need a more systematic approach to do this. And we took the discussion to, uh, to an issue and I would just like to get uh, your points of view and continue the discussion uh, because we really need to update this because at the moment very often you, form validation is just you, pr you want to submit the form and you get a alert on top of the screen and the screen sh the scrolls to the top and it's really painful to use that especially on settings pages where we even close the sections where the where the error actually happened and new form guidelines and form validation should be much more user friendly and let's try to get that updated uh, so i just like to get some uh, you know comments and then i can take it forward and come up with a list of most of the pages that need to get updated and we can take it from there and yeah, that's pretty much it for me. If anyone has a comment right now, you know, you're free to share it. Otherwise, I would really appreciate it if you take this some time to look at the issue. And I think, I think most of the, um, the forms that you're um, referring to, Mate, are still the old um, Hamble files, right? So I think in these cases, we have a lot of um, validations that get rendered um, through the old Hamel files and not the view components. And in these cases, we are using the big red blocks on top in some scenarios. So there's a lot of stuff that uses the old like Rails, UJS, like magic uh, form validation too. That it would be great to get rid of those. Right. And move on. I think a lot. I think a lot of them are like coming straight from the active. Um, uh, active directory validations, right? Uh, or active record validations. Cool. I would suggest let's take it to the, the discussion to the issue because we're running out of time. And I have another meeting and I think other people have meetings as well at half past. So uh, yeah, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yeah.